Who said that? Who's here in a bat? Where am I? Cheek. This is Omar for Box Nation. We're at Guildhall, uh, the launch press conference for Usyk Fury 2. And Tyson's trying to find you, Frank. I'm hiding. I'm in hiding. Uh, Usyk's late. His plane got delayed. Blame me. Mind games, you think, or actual delay? Well, <laughs> yeah, the pilot's having mind games with us now. His flight's delayed, and that's it. It's the facts of life. <laughs> Frank, I was just having a chat to you um, before we started. These days, I mean, most of us are in a different generation to you, if you don't mind me saying so long days for these Riyadh season like events well they are they're long days but you know that's what we do and uh, we get on with them I've had a I, mean, I went to the football last night and go until late last night weren't much of a game by the way busy week last week and the week before it's all been busy 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 you are a hustler though aren't you <laughs> well, I'm not a hustler I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a silly old bastard I should be taking it easy that's what I should be doing Maybe in your, um, in your growing up days in Islington, I'm more referring yeah. to. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, Frank, I just spoke to Tyson, and he said that he doesn't really have to change anything. Do you agree? No, it, we, he doesn't have to... He's, all he's got to do is stay focused, and just there's a little bit of showboating in there, but just, other than that, just do what he's doing in the first half of the fight and not get caught. He admitted, though, he did lose a bit of focus. Why do you think that was... I don't know, he got hit on the nose and it just seemed to do... I, I thought he had got his nose broken in the fight. He said he didn't. Yeah, well, I mean, I, he didn't, but that's what I thought. Oh, I mean, right. we're outside watching because he kept touching his nose and touching around his eye and that, so I thought there was a problem. Yeah. Frank, um, the corner on the night, do you think that's going to... Well, has that been discussed? I've I know had, he's got the same personnel. I've, I've had... I've, I've spoke with him about it and... Uh, listen, Tyson knows better than you and me what he needs to do and he'll make sure he he make sure it happens what he needs there's some tweaks there and they will get swear people got to remember it was a split decision you know it was a close fight wherever you felt won it was a very close fight actually it made that point to me because he said that there are um, some people within the sport saying that Bivol got robbed the other night and those scorecards were wider than Fury I didn't Nugent. think he got robbed I thought he just got it there are a fraction of yeah, people saying yeah of course there that. are yeah I mean but it was a close fight a unification fight it was a, again another split decision but he's saying those uh, scorecards are wider and no one was really kicking up a fuss about my fight with Usyk because he's adamant he still won that fight I, I, I thought he won it but you know it was a close fight and people score fights different ways and I like to you know people are knowledgeable and I've said it to a few people and the neutrals, like, for example, Thomas Howes is a very neutral guy, a very good judge, and he thought it was a draw. He scored the fight a draw. So, you know, it's, that's how close it was. When I just interviewed Tyson as well, I said uh, Frank went to Usyk's changing room after, and he said that visibly he could see that he'd been hurt. And I said to Tyson, do you think you took something out of Usyk that night? And he says he does. Yeah. I, I think he does, and I just hope Usyk never took anything out of him. But he was quite lively in the dressing room afterwards, Tyson. You know, when I went back, he was obviously disappointed with the result, but he was quite buoyant, and you know, and and he got beca and he became very quickly very f philosophical about it. I don't think it does, and that might be a bit of a controversial controversial statement. But do you think this defines his legacy? No, I think his legacy is there. He, th this, in some ways, it could be a, a it could define it in as much that after the fight. A lot of journalists said that Usyk is now one of the boxing greats. He's up there with the Allies and with everybody. He's the best of his generation, best of the 20, 21st century. And I'm glad they've said that because if Tyson beats him, then that becomes Tyson. But away from that, you don't actually think that this defines a legacy? No, I think he's, I think he's shown what he's all about. You know, from where he's been, two-time world champion. He's not done it once, he's done it twice. He's won, t he's, he's won it twice and the second time coming up from the most extremely difficult circumstances you know from substance abuse booze suicide the worst thing that could ever happen to a human being thinking of and contemplating suicide 11 stone overweight I mean come on give the man some credit for that that's his defining moment one man who does think it defines his legacy is Simon Jordan In, well, you know. anyway on to the next one What's that? On to the next one. Well, actually, I've got one more on him, uh, away from this fight. Um, a, a, 
this, these comments got a lot of traction on TalkSport uh, the other day, so I do want you to respond to it. He said that yourself and Eddie aren't a bullying Ben Shalom. I don't, well, explain to me how. In terms of, I think there was an incident here at the Dubois Joshua uh, presser where Eddie was saying some things to him, the whole shove incident. Well, that's between, if he's had a shove in and said something to him, then deal with it. He's a man. Was he a crybaby? Mrs. Boxing. We're in the sport of boxing. I mean, come on. Was he, you know, I, I don't even know why we're even having a stupid conversation like this. You know, someone, someone is rude to me, doesn't say excuse me, and just walks in front of me and then starts pushing back on me. I dealt with it man to man. Get on with it. That's what you do, bullying him. Jesus Christ. These, do you know when I started out in, in boxing, there was, remember, they've all got TV deals. There was only one TV company. I never had no TV deal, nothing. There was no other, there was just the BBC. And not only that, they had the, Al there was, the venues in London was the Albert Hall, Wembley, and the, and the smallest venue is all York Hall. They ha had exclusives on all of them. You couldn't use them. You'd cry about it, get on with it. Jesus Christ, I mean, come on. And who, you know, oh. <laughs> what he says, he says that, he says that rubbish. You know what happened with Eubank. That was set up by him. So for him to set up for Eubank to say what he said, make those those uh, slander, slanderous remarks which he had paid for. Well, what is that? What, what, what's that then? Is that is that the way you do it? A sneaky bastard? You haven't got the guts to say something to somebody's face? Because I certainly pulled him up on it afterwards. Couldn't even look at me. There you go. There's Simon's comment. Anyway, who cares? I don't even know what. I'm not. As you know what? I'm not going to talk about. I'm not going to give him oxygen anymore about this because it's irrelevant to me. We're busy doing what we're doing. We're here today announcing a great fight, a big fight, which is much bigger than talking about crap like that. It's inconsequential garbage talking about. It's supposed to be a. It's supposed to be a tough guys and tough ladies sport. Tough ladies sport now. Frank. I do want to actually don't pick up on Fabio Wardley and that situation. He's here today. Yeah. Are you guys and his management moving forward with any legal action towards Ben? Uh, he, he's being dealt with. He, you know what he said. You know, I was the licensed promoter of that event. Okay. It was a Riyadh season event. Queensbury are partners with Seller, and it was done on my license with the Boxing Board of Control. The gloves were at, the gloves were our responsibility until we gave them away. And to anyone to make any inference about the gloves is totally untrue and, 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 and I want an apology about that because it's just complete garbage. There's no border control investigation. There's no investigation. He doesn't have the gloves and it was just a stupid, ridiculous, imbecilic remark. If, if there is no apology to Fabio Baldi yourself... Well, we'll deal with that. We'll deal with it. Okay, okay. We'll deal with it. Anyway, again, I don't want to keep talking about all this negativity. It's all garbage. We've got a big fight coming up. Fabulous undercard, some really good fights. That's the business we're in. I'm not talking about someone, someone whether they're getting their face in a photograph and, and they get where their seats are. And I couldn't give a shit about all that rubbish. We're in the fight business. That's the business we're in. It's called F I G H T, fight. And you have to fight for everything. That's what you have to do if you want to succeed. You want to win as a fighter, you've got to fight. You want to be, you want to be in the game as a promoter, fight. And be a pussy. Last one, someone who's certainly in the fight business is Daniel Dubois. Yep, he uh, certainly is. He returned from his holiday in Brazil, well-deserved break. Uh, I caught up with him at Heathrow Airport. Uh, I don't I'll know if you saw it. the interview. Yeah, yeah. Um, he thinks Joshua might have some demons about taking that rematch. Well, you know, only, only AJ can answer that. I was with him yesterday and we've got an alternative plan if that is the case. Okay. So w when do you think you'll have concrete news on Daniel, Frank? Uh, I would think within the next few days. Next few days. Frank, always a pleasure. It always is. Thank you. Cheers.